Hi, I'm Dr. Zarka Latif from ADC Midfasters and today I'm here with a new topic about the initial assessment forms. Now we all know that filling of ADC forms is always a task because it requires a lot of information and uh, the certification and all the details have to be so perfect. So today I'm making this video uh, just to uh, give you more information about how you can fill your forms without any hassles, right? So before starting with that, I would want to tell you that your initial assessment uh, is now valid for only seven years. Earlier it was valid for a lifetime, but now there are certain changes in ADC rules and they say that uh, your assessment is only going to be valid for the next seven years after the date of successful assessment right and um, once you submit your forms to ADC it can take about eight weeks uh, for them to give you the result of their assessment okay and in case you have got your uh, like uh, any of your form is incomplete and your uh, you have sent your form to ADC and they require certain other documents which you have not provided and your you know assessment process is incomplete so incomplete assessment is only going to be valid for one year okay so if you don't complete your assessment process in that one year you have to start with the initial uh, assessment process all over again okay so these were some important points all of this has been written in the initial assessment form please read um, the entire form very carefully each and every detail has been provided in the form only right um, now starting with the sections now the first section section A, is regarding the photographs uh, I've already discussed about it in my um, certification guidelines video. In case you have any doubts, please go through that video. Um, I think it will be more clear to you then. Um, so I'll not be discussing more about it. You just need to provide two certified photographs uh, to ADC. Okay. In the next section, section B, you need to provide your personal details. Uh, starting with your title, which will uh, give them an idea about your marital status, and then your your name, your family's name, and your middle name, and your actual name, okay? So, all this should be same as has been provided in your passport, okay? There should be no variation in your, in the names that are given in the form, and, and the proof that you are giving, which is the passport, okay? So it should be very much similar to what is given in your passports and then uh, you also need to mention your date of birth, your gender and uh, in case there has been any name change you need to provide an evidence uh, for that as well. Like this was your previous name and um, now you, you, your, your current name is this and that should be provided with an evidence as well. And also in case you have got two documents with two different names um, then also you need to provide an evidence that both the names are correct for you okay so all of this has been written at the end of the form in case you have any such um, uh, situation please read the form carefully now section C is um, again about your personal details your address needs to be filled your phone numbers have to be given and the number should be given along with your country codes and uh, the email address that you are providing should be functional because ADC prefers to contact you through emails mostly. So it's very important that you give the email address that is functional and that you are checking constantly, right? Now the fourth section, section D is regarding the authority to act form. Basically, if you want anyone uh, to correspond with ADC on your behalf, any third person, you can do that by filling this authority to act form so the link for this form is provided in section d of the actual form and in case you want to nominate a person you need to keep this form along okay uh, along with all the details and the signatures of that person as well 
so the uh, the purpose of this uh, section is that if um, you know whenever adc wants to contact you he will be um, sending an email to you as well as to that third person that you have nominated right so in case you feel that you want someone uh, to act on your behalf you can fill this form as well so coming to section e which basically does not require much writing just you have to um, mark the field that you are interested in B most of the people go for dentistry so for dentist you have to mark uh, dentist uh, from part 11 and in part 12 you have to mark registration only right because it has been written that adc is not going to conduct skills assessment so in case you mark the other two that may uh, cause some problems in your assessment process so it's better if you can mark registration only now coming to section f which is uh, a long one here you need to mention about uh, the name of your dental qualification because different countries have different names for dental graduation so you should be writing the name from where you have done this degree and what it is called there like if if you're if you've done bds you should be writing bachelors of dental surgery and you will be also writing the name of the institute from where you have done this degree and um, the details the exact location of that institute as well yeah and then you need to mention about your course length please um, mind this that adc is not considering courses that are less than four years duration so make sure that your courses are um, like the duration is given correctly i am not telling you to you know write any false information because everything is going to be checked with the documents that you are providing okay so make sure that your documents and what has been written in your form is same okay to avoid any hassles please make sure that both the things are same you also have to provide two documents here which is one is your transcript in which all your uh, you know all the subjects that you have covered in your entire graduation process will be mentioned and the marks that you have scored in each subject will also be mentioned in that um, form okay so uh, in the beginning of that form it will be written that you have your your course duration was from this time to this time so there will be no scope that you can write any false information in this form okay because everything has to be supported by the documents okay and also you need to provide one hour certificate in which, in which you will be writing about the clinical and the theoretical hours that you have spent during the entire course of your graduation okay uh yeah and then you need to mention that as well here like total theory hours and total clinical hours okay uh th this again should be so, uh, very much same to what has been provided in your transcript and your hour certificate okay now total self-directed learning hours mostly this needs not to be filled so this should be kept back in because it is not a compulsory thing to fill and also you need to write about your internship or house officer dates like if you have done your internship again that should be supported by the internship certificate and the duration since when to when were you um, doing this internship okay this again has to be mentioned now the next two sections in um, the form are for the dental hygienist and dental specialist so i'll not be discussing that because this video is for the general dentists only and then coming to section g which is the registration history in this you have to mention if you have sat for any licensing exam like we have dci here so you need to uh, mention the name of that exam as well and you also need to mention about your registration details like um, the, the date when uh, when your uh, registration was done and your uh, name of your full registration and the name of your current registration as well and up till when it is valid okay so all these details have to be mentioned along with the documents you need to um, send the uh, registration certificate and your recent uh, registration renewal certificate as well okay then 
registration status if you have ever been refused for any registration have you ever had your registration withdrawn or are you subject to any professional or legal proceedings past or pending so this again needs to be filled and marked okay so in case there is a yes for any of these questions you need to provide an explanation to adc as to why that was done okay and again this needs uh, to be supported by a proof by a document which will be sent by your state dental council to adc directly okay that is the letter of good standing so your state dental council will be um, sending that letter to adc mentioning that um, there are no charges against you and everything is uh, good and you are a good dentist all this should be mentioned by the state dental council and this letter will go to directly uh, will go to the adc directly okay you should not be sending this letter section h they want to know about your employment history so they want to know if you are a practicing dentist and again that needs to be supported by proof and documents so in case you are a practicing dentist if and if you are working under under certain authority then you need to provide um, your work experience certificate in which your uh, the your um, like your employer will be writing to ADC that he's working in my clinic or in my hospital from this time to this time and his work conduct has been good or whatever he feels like um, or if you are self-employed and you're working in a, pri in a private clinic of your own then again you need to provide uh, some proofs uh, regarding your practice you can provide that uh, with the help of your tax documents or your business uh, registration um, details okay so in short they want to know if you are a practicing dentist or not and that should be supported by valid documents only and in case uh, you have not been practicing for past four years you need to mention um, to ADC that you have not been practicing since past um, XYZ years and the reason why you have not been practicing as well okay uh, now in case a person has um, you know worked in multiple um, departments or in multiple clinics and he can write about those clinics in the uh, employment details here in which you need to mention about the name of the employer um, or the name of the um, the hospital where you were working uh, the location of that uh, clinic or hospital your designation and um, the duration from when to when you were uh, working there okay so this all needs to be filled and in case you have uh, worked under a single employer then you just need to fill one box only okay you don't it's not necessary to fill all these uh, three boxes here or three to four boxes here now section i needs two professional references from two different dentists um, and the dentist should not be related to you okay um, you can get these letters from either your senior or your co-dentist as well and the details of the two dentists who are sending the professional reference letters to ADC should be mentioned in this column their name and their email ID because ADC should be able to contact them okay and the format of the letter of reference or letter of recommendation has been given in the checklist all the details that they want should be mentioned in that letter okay um most important being the date because the validity of the letter of recommendation is only 12 months okay so date is very important you should be writing a date as well in the letter of recommendation along with all the details that adc wants which are provided in the checklist section j is about you accepting all the terms and conditions of adc so uh, you should go through all these points carefully and then you need to put your signatures here and you need to uh, write your name and the date as well and in section k you need to provide all the payment details like your uh, your card details your card number um, your card expiry date and the name on the card and the card holder signature all this should be provided and make sure the card details that you are giving should be from the account that has international transaction per permitted okay and then you need to go through the explanatory notes very carefully and coming to the checklist in section a you need to provide your two uh, passport sized photographs and in section b uh, you need to provide the identity pages of your passport as uh, a proof for your name 
okay and your date of birth and in case there is uh, the change of your name then you need to provide proof for that as well and then uh, in section c you don't need to provide any further documents in section d in case you are applying for authority to act form then only you need to provide that form as well otherwise you don't need to provide any documents for section d as well then in section f you need to provide your degree certificate and if it is not uh, in english then you you need to provide a proper translation for that as well and regarding the translation i have spoken about that in my other video which is about the certification uh, of adc documents so in case you have any doubts you can go back to that video okay and um, you also need to provide your official transcript which i was talking about which has all the marks of all the subjects uh, of your dental course and um, it should have your uh, your name the subjects uh, which uh, you have passed and which you have studied and then uh, the your results as well and the um, total theory and clinical hours and uh, the duration and the actual dates of your course as well and the next two the copy of the course syllabus and the evidence of further training are not required for the general dentist okay now in section f uh, you in ca in case you have uh, gone for an internship you should also be providing an internship completion certificate okay and in section g uh, in case you have uh, sat for any um, licensing exam like um, uh, national board examination for license you should also be writing about or you should also be providing a proof for that as well okay that you have passed that exam and uh, you should also be providing your registration certificate your current registration certificate and uh, you you need not to provide the letter of good standing here because that will be sent to ADC separately by your state dental council. Okay, then in section eleven, sorry, in section H, you need to uh, um, provide your work uh, statement. You should be providing your work documents in which uh, all the details should be mentioned. Like it should be on on the official, um, you know, letterhead of the institute or the clinic where you are working and it should have a proper date your name properly written the your employment history like since when to when you were working there and um, the one who's writing this for you should be confirming that you are a registered dentist and um, it should be signed by him as well and in case you are self-employed then you should be providing proofs like tax records or business registration certificate okay or if you are not employed then you have to write and explain to adc why you have not been working okay uh, it's mostly if, if it is more than five years otherwise you don't require then in section i you need to provide two letter of recommendations from either your co-dentist or your seniors okay yeah so this is about the registration process and then comes the certification of all these documents uh, for that you need to uh, watch my next video which is about the certification of ADC documents uh, I hope this uh, video was helpful for you and in case it was please don't forget to like share and to subscribe to our channel thank you